Yo, welcome back to Monstrosities, a vlog of Tokusatsu. I am your host, Matt Burkett, and this is a very special stream. On occasion, we do dive into other topics besides Kaiju, Godzilla, Tokusatsu, and all that good stuff. Uh, we do occasionally dabble in J-horror, Japanese horror films. Films like, you've heard of The Ring series, The Grudge. And uh, tonight's topic is actually something that I was not aware of up until maybe just a month or two ago. And uh, damn, is it kind of creepy. There's some really, really cool stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, joining me is a friend of mine all the way from Tokyo, Japan. The one, the only, James Davies. Hello, everybody. What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, not too bad, man. How are you? Good, good. Um, I think we should just quickly recount that this is actually a redo of the cursed stream from last month. Which is yeah, funny yeah. because the movies that we're talking about tonight typically deal with curses and demonic forces. And there certainly was something <laughs> against us that night. Oh, yeah, definitely. Too many tech errors and YouTube going down. Yeah, someone did not want us having that stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you had actually reached out to me because you wanted to talk about this guy. And I'm going to bring up his picture right here. Where is it? This guy. This dude right here, right? Mm. Koji Shiraishi, right? I had yeah, never yeah. heard of this director up until the point that you that you were like, hey, I've been watching some of his movies lately, and I was wondering if you wanted to talk about it. Uh, for context, you and I have done um, a couple of different streams before talking about, you know, J-horror. Um, you've re you reviewed the Sadako movie that came out a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, this guy, Shiraishi, I mean, he has a, a career that spans about two decades, you know, early 2000s to now. And really is kind of like he's a found footage director primarily but his found footage movies are creepy af man oh yeah like how did you tell me how you discover this guy like 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 pitch it to the audience that we have here like like describe a little bit what this guy's all about well it was weird it was like um i studied a bit of japanese at university and um my obviously like my teacher was like oh you should watch japanese movies to study more japanese so i'm like that makes sense i mean it makes a little bit of sense you know but let's just go with it <laughs> so i just ended up going to like a local like um secondhand shop like you know where they had like loads of um like dvds and they had, like a japanese asian section everything was yeah. lumped into asian and they had like box sets of like, you know, like uh, The Ring, G1, The Grudge, and then uh, these movies as well on a uh, DVD. And I don't really remember watching them because I watched so many all at once. But um, yeah, it was kind of an interesting experience, uh, kind of absorbing all of that. And um, I think what made it unique was because Ring and G1 are like very stylized horror. Yes. Uh, the found footage horror was just very different because they were like, like they're designed to be like um, uh, documentaries. Yes. Uh, which I thought was kind of an interesting take on the topic. And it's more this of like guy a mockumentary kind of thing, you know, more along the lines of like Blair Witch Project or something. Yeah, yeah. And that was obviously that's popular. But at this time as well, I think it was the start of the Paranormal Activity movies. Yeah. I think this actually predates. Um, I got to double check when when Paranormal Activity came out, but I'm about ninety percent certain that this predated that by at least four years. And you know, I, I think the the main movie we're talking about is Noroi, um, mm. which is, well, that was like two thousand four. And I think let me just double check here. And sorry for kind of like interrupting you. Uh, no, that's fine. Activity that was two thousand and seven. Ooh. Yeah, and then widely released in two thousand nine, um, and that's interesting because it you watch Noroi and it's really kind of hard not to wonder if that really added to the, uh, you know, the, the filmmakers of Paranormal Activity because there's a there's a lot of similarities I would argue in there. Oh yeah, no, definitely. And what I like, but what I like more about it is like there's like that layer of reality with a documentary yes. style. Because obviously, like a lot of American and even like uh, Spanish, um, Spanish ones like uh, record. I don't know if the chat knows record as well. Um, it kind of makes it seem like it's real when it's not. 
but um, this one is trying to convince you it's like a real television documentary. It's you. You told me to check this one out first, and um, I checked this out with Max again last month when we were trying to do this originally. And there is just some like I love again the reality that it kind of displays. You know, it, it does feel very like a very genuine kind of documentary, like just very light on the special effects and stuff. But it also, much like Blair Witch, has this sprawling mythology behind it that's, that, un mm. that unravels by the end of the movie. And it's also much like Blair Witch, where it's not dropping tons of expositions. You kind of have to, you know, pick up piece C that is uh, presented in the, maybe the first 15 minutes and then, you know, lock it together with, with piece A that's all the way at the end of the movie to kind of you know, form what this is all about. And I love movies like that. And I, this is one that again, like I had never heard talked about that much. Like, is this guy, I mean, is he, he's obviously popular because Noroi like just launched his career. Um, mm. Is he well known in Japan? Is he a, a cult figure? Very cult, very, very cult. A lot of his other movies, um, like outside of this sort of documentary J-horror, yeah. Uh, tends to be um, either like hyper action kind of horror, like uh, the Teke Teke movies. Uh, Teke Teke, for those who don't know, is the, uh, I think it's the woman that's like cut in half and she like walks down and like reaps your soul if you go over her bridge or something like that. Oh, that's a lovely thought. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, he also did um, Sadako versus Kayako. So we got a ring reference there. He, I got his uh, his full thing. I'll, I'll go ahead and share this just real quick. Right there, guys, that Noroi screen um, that we have up, that poster is, again, creepy as hell. Um, yeah. But fits the movie uh, so damn well. But just real oh, quick yeah. here, I'm just going to launch his Wikipedia page. Uh, let's go right here. So, yeah. So, Jurai the Uncanny. I remember hearing about this one right here. Noroi, um, Carved, Grotesque. I actually just read that one. I read about that one. It sounds like a torture porn film, actually. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, there was it, apparently it's banned in from uh, your neck of the woods back home. It, it's banned. In oh, Britain. Yeah, I, I, England has a history of banning this kind of stuff, um, obviously because of the video nasties. If anyone's right. aware of the video nasties from the eighties, um, a cult that that we that I want you to talk about because I was trying to watch that, and then I got called into a meeting. The Teka Teki movies that you were talking about, and uh, Colt in twenty thirteen, Sadako vs mm. Kariko, Hell Girl, mm. which I feel mm. like I. Had, I remember seeing a trailer for that one not too long ago. Yeah, it's based off an anime. If anyone in the chat as well knows Hell Girl in anime as well, it's about a girl. You kind of like, you kind of use her spirit to kind of uh, reap revenge on people. It's actually quite a good anime and series. And then he did the movie version as well. That's awesome. Um, I got a couple people in the chat. By the way, hello everybody in the chat. Thank you for coming. I know this this isn't a, our typical you know, uh, topic of conversation, but it is one that I really enjoy. And I always like having James on here. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He's very fucking cool. Um, but uh, Isabella says, I've never heard of no Roy the Curse. And then Brian says, me neither. And then Joey also agrees, me too. Um, something that should be mentioned to you guys, uh, and I, I, I want you to, to take full resource of this. No Roy has actually not had a, an official US release, I believe. Mm. But... If you um, search and scour certain archives, certain archives that might, you know, and you might find find it where you would put a dot and next to it might be some letters that might be A, you know, O-R-G or something. Maybe you'll find what you're looking for there. <laughs> right, James? Right? Yeah, it's also on YouTube as well. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you, it's not, that's you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you can't you can't just say it. You got to be cute about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I know. It's, it's This is the thing as well. Like, these movies are, like, easy to find, but you're not going to look for them. So that's yeah. kind of, like, 
why why I kind of want to talk about them as well because they are really good movies and they are very important if you enjoy like the ring and the grudge and all that style of movies one missed call you will like these movies but no one talks about them or kind of uh follows them sort of thing no never never and the thing that again i, I just I, I have to just keep on i'm really trying to sell these guys on this you know the the eight or ten people that we have watching at the moment mm. like it, this is worth seeking out because like james was saying i mean atmospherically stylistically it's right up there with all those franchises he was talking about you know um it really predates the um found footage uh western style that really picked up in kind of like the the mid 2000s where it's just kind of like you know manufactured jump scares and stuff like that like these movies are not like that these movies are atmospheric uh sometimes just creepy as hell because of that and um that's and and again like um i've only seen noroi and sadako versus kayako but even watching the first quarter of a cult i mean he's still imbuing that idea and i love that like that's that's j horror asian horror at, at its finest because i really don't think you know there is better done atmospheric horror than you know asia you know uh the the stuff that that comes from you know south korea the stuff that comes from japan uh there was uh detention that came from uh taiwan earlier mm. this year you know uh, based on the game of the same name and uh that was Again, extraordinarily creepy and very, very good. But uh, yeah, totally, totally worth it in my opinion. Um, so we kind of, we kind of like touched on Noroi a little bit, but I was wondering, like, what is the next movie in his lineup that you would care to discuss? Well, Noroi, Occult, and Cult are like uh, a series of um, like found footage horror. So, like, start with Neroi, go down to um, a cult, and then finish on cult, because they kind of have the same pattern, the same feeling. But the yeah. good thing is about them, it's not like it's the same difference kind of situation. They're all found footage horror. They all have the same premise of being, like, a documentary crew uh, documenting uh, paranormal activity around the Tokyo area. And it's normally related to something around um, Japanese mythology or demons and spirits and stuff which means they have to go out of the city to the countryside. But um, each of them does it in a different way. So Noroi is very um, direct. It's the most horrific one, I would say. It's the most horror Noroi. It, it deals with like um, psychology, like psychological horror, psychic powers and like um, supernatural entities. It's much more of a traditional horror movie. And then you get to a cult, and it's much more of a um, like documentary about um, kind of like a loner. The premise is like the, there there is like an attack, and yeah. these people are called murdered, and a guy is carved with this symbol, and then it's kind of like he's pr it's like he believes he has to carry on this curse um, for a higher power. And it kind of almost deals with like terrorism, like themes of terrorism and like um, like loners and things like that. Uh, being like a loner, like the guy is essentially like an otaku, like a weeaboo almost yeah. sort of thing. Kind, kind of like of a bum really too. Uh, has no money for an actual apartment, has to kind of live out his nights in manga cafes. Yeah. So he's like, so um, this is a cult um, in a cult as well. Like um, it turns into like a documentary almost, like, you know, for like, but in, in like in an interesting way, we're following this guy, and he is just uh, a loner. He's very awkward. He's very horrible to like um, certain people, and very mm -hmm. abrasive. And then it starts developing. In the end, it starts developing into like more love. I don't like using the word, but it's like Lovecraftian horror. A lot of this <laughs> is Lovecraftian horror. Um, so I don't know if the chat is interested in Lovecraftian horror. But um, well, or it has to do with giant monsters, so I'm pretty sure that they would. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's all like this cosmic kind of like fated stuff, and there's like Matt was saying earlier. There's lots of like it's like put it. You've got like A and C. You can you know the start. You kind of know where it's going to end up, but the B is a total mystery. Yeah. Or sometimes he'll do like C and A. You know how it's going to be, but you don't know what's, yeah. what else is going to. happen. 
but so and, yeah, it's, he, he plays a lot with that. <clears throat> he really does. Um, and something that I wanted to point out, Noroi definitely does this occult. Like I said, I can only talk about the first quarter of it, but um, the, when you're talking about, again, it's documentary roots. What's really kind of cool about uh, both these films is that they're very, yes, they're very low budget, but there's still, isn't like this world spanning end of the world kind of thing. You know what I mean? It is a small intimate tale between, you know, a dozen or so people, maybe if that, you know, and how this dark thing is just kind of, you know, silently weaving its way through, you know, society or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love that because it's not big and loud and nasty it's creeping it's in the shadows you know like you, you don't really know what's occurring it's not this like you know world again this this kind of globe trotting kind of story you know what i mean no yeah you know, very intimate very just just ugh, yeah like especially <laughs> no roy like just the stuff that happens yeah. in there and i can't wait to finish a cult because like i you were saying it it sounds like it just keeps on kind of building and building and which is exactly how his previous movie did it too Oh yeah, definitely. And like I say, it builds in different ways. A, a, a cult builds by the personality of the characters, like developing into something more sinister, and like the madness kind of swirling and spiraling around them. And then Naroi is like the ramping up of the curse, and like the horrific revelations. That, oh my god! Like you know, some of the stuff that comes out in Naroi, it's just like it's not so. It's not graphic either, which is what I like. Yeah, uh, no, it's definitely so, not. Yeah, like, I think if for the people watching who are interested in J-horror, they're not like the gore movies, and it's not like it's not like The Nun or movies like from The, the Conjuring, which are fun, I do enjoy them, like, but it's not that kind of style of horror. It's very much more reserved and kind of, um, I would say, like, because I'm quite familiar with, obviously, like, English-British horror. It's also kind of gothic and kind of just has this kind of like grungy vibe to it as well. Very industrial. We were talking about the score. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very, yeah. It feels very, I don't want to say slapped together, but just very homemade, you know? Yeah, he yeah. Put, he put this together on his PC from 2005, you know? You know, like, if, if you were to make it nowadays, it just, it doesn't feel like it's cutting edge, which adds yeah. to, again, the creepiness of it. Um, and like Brian Stevens was saying, like Blair Witch Project, I would... yeah, it's very guerrilla, very guerrilla yeah, filmmaking. Yeah, as well. oh, totally. Yeah, because it's like there's shots in um, like where they're walking through the streets and like they're blurring out entire sections because it's real people and they've just got like two random actors just there, like yes. doing a live shot film, like you know, just bouncing off each other, sort of thing. Yeah, and probably actually being in real places of business doing stuff, you know what I mean? But like you said, they're doing this whole guerrilla style filmmaking. Um, yeah, and like obviously living in Tokyo, the places they go to, I know. I've been to them. <laughs> I've been through them. So it's even scarier for me because it's like this could be happening in the apartment across the street. <laughs> like, it's really creepy to think about because that's what I like about his movies as well. They blend the modern urban versus like the traditional folk horror of then, like, yeah. Hmm. That, 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 sorry, not, not to interrupt. And I'm sorry that beep happened. That was something on my <laughs> work computer. Um, you, modern J horror or, you know, J horror from the past 20, 30 years has really done a great job of kind of blending modern Japan with the old, you know what I mean? Which I think is, I mean, I'm not trying to speak like I know what I'm talking about, but I think that there's some kind of cultural significance there. Is there not where it's just like, you know, you got this cutting edge high tech stuff and then this old, mm. you know, ancient thing just kind of clashing together. Um, that's, that's literally like the bread and butter of the most popular ones like ring. It was yeah. videotapes and television meets the traditional, um, like, you know, like the traditional like um, curses yes. and one, one missed call. Um, a curse that follows you through the phone and stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely because Japan is such a traditional country culturally, while well, being such a progressive country, like in terms of um, design and like technology, Naroi and um, Occult uh, really touch on that kind of style there. 
And uh, yeah, Doomzilla is talking about Fatal Frame. It's very much in that oh, same yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. the horror is kind of there in the camera. And you pick out you, especially in a cult, you'll see little things on the camera that are like being affected by like throughout the movie. And also as well, um, you see it a lot in um what you call it? Uh Noroi as well. You'll see it in the curse a lot as well. Like just these little visual cues that tell you there's something off about yeah. what's happening. Yeah, a shadow figure or something like that, you know, just something in the frame. Sometimes um, not even that though. That's the thing I like. It's not just like you know, like in a horror movie now, you'll see like um you'll see like a black shadow behind someone, the camera moves, it moves back again, the shadow's gone. This would be like things just like weaving past the camera, like yeah, all no, stuff. Exactly, yeah. And that's one of the good things about this as well is that it, it doesn't uh it doesn't manufacture those scares, which I again I'm sorry I'm always knocking on Hollywood, but there comes a point. I mean, yes, obviously Hollywood put out some uh, decent found footage horror movies, but there also is a smorgasbord of just really, really badly done ones. And all those mm. uh, particular ones, in my opinion, they always kind of like the camera just so happened to catch that thing that was, you know, going yeah. super fast, you know, through the trees or whatever the heck. Um, but this seems much more organic, which again just adds to that feeling of just like <laughs> this could be happening in the apartment building across the way from where you live, James. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I start seeing pigeons flocking to a door, I just don't look. I just don't look. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that in Arroy. You guys got to go see these movies. Like I, I know it sounds like we're just kind of like you know like go see these, but like they're these are definitely. I, I'm really glad that you recommended this. You know, James, like though these films because like I'm always looking for good stuff. Um, I we mentioned it last time. And I just wanted to, to bring up because I also feel like it's very, very, very similar in feel. And I don't know if, if um, Shirashi actually was inspired by, by this, but I wouldn't be surprised after watching it based on your recommendation. But Ghost Watch. Yeah, Ghost Watch. Yeah, I love that movie. I love it. It's, 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 it's brilliant. And yeah, it's one of those things like um, I was talking about earlier, like gothic British horror, yeah. like... Uh, is the chat familiar with Ghost Watch? I don't know. Chat, have you heard of Ghost Watch before? Because I have not. In fact, let's just put in right here. Yep, this is it right here. Mm, this is like, if it, like um, I don't know if anyone's going to be from England <laughs> in the chat, <laughs> but this is quite an infamous, um, like, uh, it was like a Halloween special essentially, I say Halloween special, done like a documentary, but presented as real. So like, uh, it, well, presented as real as possible by guidelines sort of thing. So they set up like a fake phone line, but the phone line was meant to send you to tell you a message. Oh, this is fake. This isn't real. But the phone line's jammed. And then because of the, the, the acting and the suspense and the horror that came from Ghostwatch, people thought it was real. And like it did, like what um, Naroi and Occult and all these uh, found footage movies do in Japan is they use a lot of real actors, idols, and like famous people. And Koji um, Shirashi in Occult even plays a version of himself. Yeah, exactly. And they do this in Ghost Watch as well. They use a lot of British celebrities and a lot of British TV personalities to make it real. Like on the cover, and Michael Parkinson's like a famous talk show host. Yeah. So this is like the proto Naroi, the proto kind of a cult. It feels so real. And it, I watched it when I was in university. And it, I had to sleep with the lights on. It was that terrifying <laughs> Ghost Watch. And then I got that same feeling from Naroi when I watched it as well. Like just this feeling of just like dread and panic and oh god, this is creepily realistic, even though I know it's not. You you don't feel really good, and it's not to say like you feel miserable or depressed after watching these movies, but they are definitely films that um, haunt you afterwards. You know. Oh, I I, I prayed. I think after I watched the Roy Ghost Watchers, it's like <laughs> yeah, that was it's like it, you got like that vibe, just that evil vibe. Yeah, um, no, it's uh, it, it, it. There's definitely some. I mean, 
dark stuff in here. I mean, we've, we've talked about it before, like, and I'm kind of weird. I have a weird time with like, you know, like devil possession movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I can, I can make an exception for these films, but they still do creep me out. I don't like watching them like, you know, on loop all the time. No, no, no. In a while. It's, it's not, it's not a, you know, it's kind of fun to take a trip to the dark side and, and see this stuff, you know? Um, I wanted to ask you what, so you brought up <laughs> cult. Mm. I have not seen yet. What is this one like? Uh, oh, sorry, Matt. I just want to ask uh, Ghastly Theatre. He said, was Ghostwatch before Blair Witch? And it was. Oh. Um, Ghostwatch came out in 1992. Yes. And then Blair Witch was 1999. So it came out several years before it was like a documentary tv style uh before blair witch done very like like the methods that are done in uh, ghost watch i think in some cases actually are better than blair witch blair witch is one of my favorite horror movies of all time mm. you know very felt very similar to like after you watch ghost watch like i had to i had very tr i had a lot of trouble sleeping that night very atmospheric you know <laughs> um there's another movie that was in between those two that i don't know if you've ever seen but it's called the last broadcast you oh, that? That, yeah. People are saying like that's a proto kind of. Um, yeah, yeah, but... yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. And it kind of falls in the same line. Again, that lo fi kind of realistic kind yeah. of thing. It's... And even then, um, going off actually on a more previously than before, before Blair Witch, there was another one. Uh, it was an alien abduction one, like the McPherson tapes or something like that. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like a made for TV thing, right? Oh no, that was just like a really low budget, like, <laughs> like just like some guy. He made it in the eighties. It didn't get much distribution, so then he just did it again in the nineties when like the found footage craze started up again because of Blair Witch. See, this is why I need you to again recommend me movies because <laughs> uh, you and I have similar tastes. Space guys yeah. will have to have a whole debate about that on another day. Oh, I will um, Matt, I will fight you. I will. I will <laughs> fight you in but yes. Everything else we could agree on. <laughs> you know what? That would be a fun stream, I think. I think that would be great. You know, like have a have a live debate about the merits of Space Godzilla, you know? Just just oh. just for fun. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd still win, but it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, um I, I, I have not heard of that one before. I, I need to check that out. I, I do have a, a soft spot, I think, for found footage. I mean, even stuff like if we're going to talk about just the methodology of it, like, I mean, going all the way back to Night of the Living Dead in 68, 69, whenever that came out, it's not quite the same thing, but their use of radio and stuff like that, you know, even yeah. thinking about Orson Welles and the War, uh, War of the Worlds broadcast. You oh, know, yeah. Kind of just that, again, the, just that realism blending in with the sci-fi, blending in with the horror. Like, it's mm. uh, it always adds that extra vibe of just like, Ugh, you know, because it, it feels... It, it's like it's right outside your door. Yeah, and that's what that's actually what happened with Ghost Watch. There was so much of a backlash. Like kids had like were like there were two cases of PTSD amongst children after yeah. Ghost Watch aired because pe the parents were like letting their kids watch Ghost Watch, and I'm just like, this is horrifying. Why would you do that sort of thing? But because there were like kids TV presenters in it, they thought it was like a fun Halloween thing, right? And I think as well, a lot of it. Uh, going into Ghost Watch, it's a lot like the Enfield haunting. If people are aware of that, like the Poltergeist at Enfield yes. Place, there's a Conjuring movie about it, and there's been several other movies based around it. And that kind of vibe of like an everyday normal house um, is definitely like Naroy as well. Like it's that same vibe. If you do have a night of watching these found footage movies, um, first of all, uh, I would get a cross. And a statue of Jesus, and I do a little prayer before you do it. And <laughs> second, I definitely watch Ghost Watch and Naroy, and like go off in this little cycle sort of thing. My viewers aren't going to be sleeping for like a week if they do that. <laughs> I didn't. So they just <laughs> gonna be they're going to cleanse the house, get lots of lavender and sage, and so yep. all that stuff. Oh, totally, absolutely. Tofu, what's going on, my friend? Popping in just to say hi, uh, just for a little bit since SGDQ is on. But I'd like to say that Noroi is spooky, scary, and I'm a baby when it comes to this, but I love it. 
Tofu I mean, is uh, Tofu has good taste. He's he's a, a good freaking guy. Um, <laughs> educated me a lot about Godzilla Singular Point. That's for sure. Um, okay. And then just real quick here, I'm sorry that, that we're kind of jumping around here, but uh, uh, of and the same thing goes with you, James. Of the found footage genre, which one can't you stand? The one that kind of sticks out to me is Blair Witch, not Blair Witch Project, but Blair Witch, the one that came out four or five years ago. And, oh, by Adam. Uh, Yes. Uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. Ooh, or cool. um, uh, the Chernobyl Diaries. Oh, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What about you? I just feel like anything from like, like there was a sweet spot between like the mid to late 2000s up to like 2010 of like really good, like found footage. So like things like Wreck. Mm-hmm. Paranormal Activity, um, uh, gr- uh, Grave Encounters, the one in the yes. asylum. Yeah. Like all that stuff, amazing, brilliant, wonderful. And of course, all this Japanese and, uh, horror that we're talking about. And obviously in the 90s as well, there were some proto kind of like prototype ones that were interesting developing that style. But I think it kicked off. But then, of course, you had things like was like the mummy's tomb and then every oh, like I forgot. every low budget horror thing just turned into it's fat if we do find found footage it, we can do it for cheap we don't have to have good acting because the actors we could just scare the actors and do and then it just had like this slew from like 2010 to like 2015 of just absolute garbage like yeah. movies oh, and totally. um yeah definitely like the sweet spot was the the mid to late 2000s up to 2010 and then yeah it just went awful after that <laughs> um just real quick i wanted to also make mention because i totally forgot about this up until right now um you said something that for some reason just triggered it in my mind vhs one and two are ones that i really VHS one and two are great movies i prefer yeah. two i prefer What's that? two i prefer number two to number oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah yeah same 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 Three, oh, good, don't even waste your time. Oh, Three, I haven't. Don't worry. <laughs> oh man, it's like it's like every bad sci-fi original, like oh, pitch man. that never got made, got made into these short films for that one. But VHS yeah. one and two, you guys should definitely real uh, go check out. From Acno, uh, thank you so much for the two dollars, my friend. What's up? Ever watched Doll one and two and Sabrina? No, I, I've oh oh, I'm learning something new. I, I've never seen these movies. Doll one. I am curious. Um, okay, Sabrina is is that, that's not the one with Harrison Ford uh, is acting. Oh, um, no, it's is it uh, Acnogogy? Is it uh, Asian horror? Is it Malaysian or Thai? Let's see here, I'm looking. I'm looking. We're getting way off topic, but I, I'm enjoying talking about this. It does not matter to me. Because um, I don't think I've heard of Doll 1 and 2. Just making sure I'm not closing the wrong window. Let's see here. Doll 1 movie. Let's see. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so um, Agnogoji, I've got it on my list of net- on Netflix because they're available to watch in uh, Japan, but I have not seen them. And Sabrina as well is uh, on there too. So um, yeah, I'm going to check them out. Um, I've heard like meh meh things about them. So I will, uh, but I'm interested in like branching out because we talk a lot about Japanese horror. <laughs> totally. And, um, I, but we do, I think me and Matt will enjoy other areas of horror like from malaysia and stuff like that and thailand so yeah hey, thanks cool. for the recommendation Aknogoji. oh check them out there's one from ghastly theater this is another one i have not heard of Ooh. have you all no, seen no. psychic vision jagonrai is that what it is Sorry. ray i said that wrong jagonrai jagonrai Late 80s Japanese sort of found footage see this is i know these streams aren't too popular and i'm not saying that as a negative but for the people that this does, like, like you know, like they do get into this stuff, I love, again, hearing recommendations. Akno Goji with Doll 1 and 2 and Sabrina. Ghastly Theater with Psychic Vision. Um, again, things that I'm just like, wait, what is this? Um, 
It'd be great if I could actually spell psychic correctly. <laughs> 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 I was sorry. I was trying to work out how to do it. Oh, oh, this okay. This looks familiar, but I haven't seen it. If you know what I mean, like I've probably seen it on. You're, uh, you're calling it Professor Kaiji. You've heard of it, but you've never seen it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah, there is okay. a uh, the the only book, and apparently, and this is something. It's weird because it is such a huge, huge genre to cover. I feel like I've only brushed the surface of J horror. You know, mm. um, I've jumped on Amazon and dude, there are dozens of books written about it. Like, there's one that I I always throw out there, written by David Collette, that I really enjoy. David Collette wrote another book about um, the history of Toho and Godzilla films and stuff, which is like a must read. And his Jay Horror one's great too, but there are like just dozens of volumes and, and uh, tomes of stuff that I had no idea existed. And I would not mind necessarily like diving into kind of like, again, not just the surface level stuff, but like getting deeper into like what kind of stuff is there? Because just like the kaiju genre, which is, you know, filled with, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you got Godzilla and Gamera, but there's still so much more to the genre mm -hmm. than just... You know that much like there is much more than just Sadako and Kayako, and uh, you know whatever. Um, yeah, and I, and I think as well, like like looking at like J horror, what we've talked about, like British horror now, Spanish horror, Ameri other American horror movies that are actually like well put together, or like um, they all kind of precede each other. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. Like I think like because I. Like, with J horror, it has the tag. It's Japanese horror. It's Asian horror. Yeah. But um, definitely, like there are similarities between other things from our own countries that I don't think we realize is there until you watch it all together, sort of thing. I agree. I agree. Um, so rounding all the way back <laughs> to the one and only Koji Shiraishi and his Nightmare Cinema. What is cult like in comparison to Noroi in comparison to a cult? Is it, it's also found footage, but I've also heard it's a little different. I will be honest, Matt. I have not, not watched it all yet. Why <laughs> did it bring you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think I tried to watch it after work one night because I was bored. But I'd done a, um, I think I'd done like a 12, nearly 12 hour shift that day. So I got home, I loaded up the video and I passed out after the opening credits, I believe. <laughs> so it was just you like... know what they call that around these parts? Excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you, you worked your butt off. No, you, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I will admit, uh, full disclosure, I'm only familiar with the first two, but looking at clips and pictures, one thing I'll note about this trilogy of found footage is it gets funnier and more comical. Like, Naroi is pretty dark and serious all the way through, but there's still moments of humour, like yeah. uh, the psychic character. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, like in the first, in, in the Roy, there's like this psychic character. He's like crazy. He's wrapped up in tin foil and he's like talking about like the worms, the worms are coming to eat us sort of thing. And he's like this crazy guy that like screams and shouts. It gets creepier. But then occult, there's like this running kind of humor through it, which is really good. And uh, there's this, it feels like a long joke, like a long joke. And the ending is the payoff, like, you know, yeah. but. Not in, and it's not always funny. Like it's a story with a punchline sort of thing, and that's totally. the kind of and that's how I would describe his movies in general. They're 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 stories, and then like they're, they're like a long joke with a really hard punchline sort of thing. That's awesome. I like. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I keep on saying this. I really want to dive into this guy's filmography. Mm -hmm. um, again, guys, start off with Noroi. Go from there if it catches your attention. Um, you know, like I said, I, I started watching the first quarter of a cult and, uh, I, I, I would have finished it beforehand, but again, got caught into a meeting before we did the stream. That's also an excuse, by the way, James, um, you're weak, but, Matt, <laughs> but this is like, this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. 
Uh, we got Don Potts in the house. Don, of course, is the official artist of Monstrosities. He has a question for you, good sir. Just curious as to what each of you look for in horror. Do you like jump scares, striking visuals, or heavy atmosphere? Ooh. Well, Matt, do you want to tackle that first? Because I've got too much horror in my head at the moment. I need to. <laughs> yeah, no, light. definitely. Um, for me, I would say uh, a healthy combination of of probably all you know all of them. Maybe, maybe heavy atmosphere more so than anything. I think that that truly is the rule for me of good horror is is that uh, I call it back in the Apollo Z hack days. We called it the IE rule. A I E atmosphere is everything, right? But all of my favorite horror movies, um, uh, Long Weekend from Australia, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Blair Witch Project, Alien, um, Naroi, Ring, it, all of these movies, yes, they have some jump scares, but it's the atmosphere that hangs over. It. It's that that doom and gloom mm-hmm. that really just you know gives it the the creepiness. Same thing with like um, Junji Ito manga. You know, my favorite yeah. one is uh is uh, uzumaki and yes there's some very disturbing visuals in there but it's really the atmosphere too of what it encompasses it's just like yeah you know? yeah what about you yeah. uh i've i've thinking over when you were talking there like uh definitely i'm a mix of striking visuals and heavy atmosphere because being like from england like i said i'm used to a lot of gothic horror like yeah. i grew up on like the hammer horror movies so, like, one of the big tropes of Hammer Horror were, like, the Dracula Christopher Lee movies was, like, the castle, moonlit castle, and then, like, the village, or, like, the, like, the village shrouded in fog. And, like, when, you, when I was reading, like, these books in university, the covers were, like, misty and, like, you know. So a lot of British horror is based around the striking visuals of, like, the Gothic. And the heavy atmosphere just comes from, like, the weird kind of dream-like like passive kind of nature of the camera work and stuff yeah and also a lot of euro horror like i love like dario argento and like mm-hmm. things like suspiria and um tenebrae and deep red and like just how striking the visuals are and like i know that's more like giallo and a little bit more like um like crime thriller but there's still a lot of horror in there so i'm definitely one like i like strong visuals and i like a heavy atmosphere like with the visual so definitely definitely i jump scares don't do it for me they just feel cheap every time it happens I'm like oh god damn it i got scared i didn't want to be scared then you know what i mean or like i i know it's coming yeah for example yeah. for example <laughs> like oh sorry no no go ahead please um i watched the the newest remake of the grudge uh it came out 2019 20 yep. like 2019 i that was literally just like um like sound dips out everything goes quiet you can't hear anything and then bah, jump scare like everything was that just jump jazz like character walks up to a bath full of water he looks in music cuts out hand grabs him hair rips like whips out and like grab you know and it was just like this is not what this is about the whole yeah. point is the slow burn like uh kayako crawling down the stairs and like she's coming towards you and you're so scared you can't move yeah and uh, stuff like that and um yeah so jump scares just feel cheap they just for me like if you like they're thrilling they can be quite fun i mean Uh, i'm in full agreement with you my friend yeah it's like grave encounters has some has like that jump scare that is like a gif of the woman in the corner And then she turns around and scary demon face. But it's so well done because the rest of the movie is atmospheric. Right. Whereas a lot of, I feel like too many movies now do just do the sound drops out. I'm looking at my watch. Okay. Sound stopped. We're going to have it. There's a ghostly thing happening. Boom. It happens. Okay. Let's move on. Like that's the problem. It feels like mechanical. Whereas it's um, it's atmosphere is good. Like atmosphere affects it more. You know, and and I mean, I tend to, di- you know, dish a lot of shade out on Hollywood productions on this channel. <laughs> but it, when you were describing the gr- uh, the American remake of The Grudge or the the latest one, um, dude, everything you described could also be applied for the latest Conjuring movie, uh, The Conjuring: The Devil Made Me Do It. I just watched. Oh, that I've heard that's really bad. Yeah, last yeah. week or or something like that, and that was horrendous. Uh, Max and I for 
for just for fun, we watched it chapter two the other night. Um, hmm. That was equally as horrendous uh, in um, my, opinion, you know, and uh, yeah, it, 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 the, the Hollywood way of doing things, you know, sometimes it get, you know, one slips through the cracks and it's just really good. But for the most part, the manufactured scares aren't all that great. I would say the first Conjuring movie is pretty good. You know, um, I don't remember number two that much. Yeah, but, like, uh, I've I've seen the Conjuring one. I've also seen uh, Insidious. I think it was the other one he did. Yeah, yeah. There was well, a time. I, there, there, there was actually but, some. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry. I was like, no, you go ahead. And like, no, go ahead. Sort of <laughs> like, well, I watched Insidious with my friend at university, and um, it was honestly pretty good. And it did have a very effective jump scare uh, in the middle. Um, if anyone's aware of the Insidious movie, uh, I won't spoil it, but it's um, it, 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 it like it shows like the little videos, um, like, right. like the little videos of the murder, and there's that one. Uh, what is it like gardening, like late night gardening or something like that? Yeah. And me and my friend were not ready. We're not ready for the for that for that one. That was uh, oh, that got us. And we were drinking as well, so we were pretty drunk. <laughs> and it happened, and we were just like we had to stop the movie and re recompose. We went out for like a cigarette, and we were just there like, oh my god, I did not want that to happen. What the hell, sort of thing. <laughs> there was around the time of Insidious, I feel like there was, um, and I think Bloomhouse had a lot to do with it. You know, I, I'm kind of, this is all off the top of my head, just general perception. I, I'm not that much of like a, uh, a horror buff to where like, I'm kind of, you know, chronicling everything that happens, but there mm -hmm. was uh, a string of really good, um, uh, horror movies that popped out. You know, there was one what? called Oculus that, that popped up that I'm, I'm trying oh. to remember that. This guy was attached to a, a recent movie that I don't think did too well. I, I could be wrong, but Oculus was really good. Um, there was a, uh, oh man, there was a movie. I forgot to tell you about this last time we talked, but it's it's called um, The Whole, oh, what is it? Something about, the, I got to look this up because this is one I, I have been recommending people. Ah. It's um, The Whole in... Yeah, the hole in the ground. That's literally what it's called. Okay, um, oh, it's from 2019, fine. and uh, it, it's it's a very it's not it's one of these movies again. It's not like this big sprawling, um, crazy, uh, world ending kind of thing. But Ooh. it felt way more um, high budget, and they were doing things that just I was just like, whoa, this is kind of. <laughs> This is eerie, you know, the camera shots, the, and I think that it, it would go up your alley because it does have some striking visuals in it. You know, it feels, oh. it feels like a, a very well-written Twilight Zone episode, you know, like, like the, not oh. the Rod Sterling Twilight Zone, but the, the Richard Matheson Twilight Zone, you know? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, just, just really creepy and, and uh, it's good stuff. So again, not to say that Hollywood always does this, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of junk, but even stuff like Insidious and, and Oculus, you know, these are more low budget things. There's less hands in the pot, you know? And I, I, yeah. And I think as well, like to be fair with Japanese cinema as well, like the, every movie after the first two ring movies, in my opinion, because I know you're not a big fan of ring two. Um, I hate but, it so much. I'm kidding. Mm, mm, Just like I hate mm. Space Godzilla, James. Mm, why okay. do I do these with you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> that was a purposeful little jab, and I'm glad you, <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> but like, yeah, like Ring Zero was like okay, but it was like a melodrama. And then like uh then every Ring movie after that has just been disappointing. Like even Sadako, the one that I saw in 2019, I wasn't exactly in love with it. It was just very That's it was right. like a six out of ten, very mediocre and just felt very hollow. And the same with Juon, uh, The Grudge. I like the first movie. That's fine. Second movie, I don't really like at all. I think it's pretty confusing and boring. Um, and then, so, like, some of the Ring... Uh, some of the, sorry, some of the Juon Grudge movies spin-offs are pretty good, but they get very graphic, and I don't like where they go with the stories. 
um there's yeah. a little bit um there's like nasty stuff involving like you know uh, miners and things in it which um nothing explicit but like heavily implied and i don't like that kind of stuff in my horror yeah. that's the thing like i'm i'm not like i'm not one of these like well, another thing i going back to back to the question about what do you like about horror what i don't like about horror is when it's too extreme Same. and like like i don't mind dark topics or like the um like you know dealing with dark things but when it's explicitly just kind of there like torture porn or um you know like revenge movies uh i can't do those like i can't do the i spit on your grave stuff i can't do the whole like um like there's that movie revenge that came out a few years like in 2019 which is one of those kind of revenge movies um so yeah it, i i just can't handle that kind of stuff it, it makes me too it makes me too uncomfortable you know what no, i mean I, so I I my horror. I'm, yeah I'm like i prefer my horror, horror to be somewhat more implied even if they're dealing with that kind of stuff it's more the implication yeah. rather than the this is happening how horrible yeah, sort of thing it's the unseen that really mm. makes it that much creepier you know what i mean it's much more you know creepy to think that there's something lurking in the shadows and to just see it, you know, in, in plain mm. sight, it's, it's the jaws factor. It's, you know, not seeing the shark till the very end kind of thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think that, uh, you know, horror is a, is a fun escape, but you know, there's so many horrific things in, in reality that, you know, seeing people get butchered and I'm not talking about in like the Jason Voorhees kind of slasher eighties kind of thing. I'm talking like the torture porn that you were saying and stuff. It's just, it's, I don't know. There's nothing pleasant about it. And that was something that, you know, we earlier we were talking kind of a long detour back to Koji Shirashi. And, and I don't mind that we're talking about different stuff, but it's just funny, like going back to him. But like that movie we were talking about, Grotesque. Like, again, I yeah. haven't seen it, but reading an interview with him, he was basically just saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, somebody told me that they wanted me to make the most violent movie I could possibly make. And, uh, yeah, it, it was it was really disturbing. There's something I forget what letter it is, but there's something in ABCs of Death. If you've ever seen that series, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I think you know which one I'm talking about. It's in number one, and I don't remember what it is. I think it comes from either Indonesia or Taiwan, but it is somewhere in Asia that this originated from. But do you remember what I'm talking about? It's that guy who's being put in that chair and he has to like witness oh. an axe. Oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah. Oh. That I don't <laughs> remember what it was, me. but it, it to this day is probably one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen, and yeah. it's probably not something that I'm like will ever go back and be like, "Oh, James, you got to see this." I but think I mean, that actually was the Japanese one. I think that was the Japanese one. <laughs> I don't think it was the Japanese one. I don't think it was. Um, the Japanese ones were more comical. Um, it, it, it like I said, it, it was one, some one kind of two. Yeah, no, the, I'm trying to remember. I don't think it was the Japanese one, though. Um, but yeah, regardless, it was bad. <laughs> but I'm right there with you. You know, I'm right there with yeah. you. Um, I just wanted to say real uh, fast hello to Summit Kaiju International. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're Ooh. doing well, my friend. We got Ghastly Theater saying, dude, Oculus was so good. Mike Flanagan is underrated. That's who it was, Mike Flanagan. He did the Netflix series uh, Haunting of Hill House as well as The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, mm -hmm. two, two series that I wanted to love very much, but can, cannot recommend. If you want to see, you know, talking about old horror, you want to see good atmospheric gothic horror, The Innocence. That's a. Oh, yeah, I love The Innocence. Yeah. Dude, dude, so good. I, I can't believe I, I didn't name that like my top horror films when we were going over that before, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, Ghastly Theater Ring Two grew on me over the years, haha. Ha. And then Doomzilla says Ring Two is a snooze fest. <laughs> well, you might have a six four British guy come pounding at your door. Uh, I'm mm. just saying. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, nice, I'm nice to the chat because I don't really know them and I don't want to scare them off. <laughs> like, you're, you're fair game. <laughs> oh, great. You're going to take it out on me then. <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah, sorry. You're right, by the way. It's uh, Timo Janto, who is Indonesian. And he, he, his, his, the, the one you were talking about was Libido, uh -huh. was, was the L one. 
L is for libido. And uh, yeah, it's Indonesian. Sorry. I there was something there was a similar Japanese movie or something like that. Yes, like you're right. yeah. similar idea, but like I blending my Asian horror together in this weird cocktail at the moment in my head. No, I'm trying no, to I mean it, it's it's it, it's myself. <laughs> <laughs> there was um there was one, there was another Indo I think it was Indonesia or it was Taiwan in uh one of the VHS movies too. Do you remember that? At the oh, in the second movie? one, the the cult, the cult one. Yeah, 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 that was that was like amazing. I love yeah. that was my one of my favorite ones. I think because it just at the end it just goes absolute bang shit. I oh yeah, it, it's it's like it's almost um you know we were talking about you know this movie cult here. It's it's almost like a reverse where everything is ab absolutely it's the end of the world, right? Yeah. And then the end of the thing is like it's like the punchline of a joke, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it, it it's good. It's it's weird, but it works. It really yeah. does. And and also as well, like the special effects in that scene, like in that moment, are amazing. And it's so intense. Yeah. And for me, it's the little things. Like when you're running, like when they're running through the facility, it's the little things that get me. Like um like you know like when they're running through and like they run past the bedroom and there's like the the couple like the blood sucked like the blood covered yeah. just a couple like yeah, yeah, having yeah. like necks or whatever in the bed I'm just, like, like you just catch a glimpse of that and then like you run past another room and there's like a guy like cutting his neck open and it's like just these random horrific visions of like this chaos and demons like just roaring at you and you're just like oh my god there's like that's the thing as well it's the intensity that i really yeah. enjoy like it's that kind of like, especially about found footage, is that when it's like intense, it's just like it's there and like it's driving you, sort of thing. It's your fight or your fight or flight kicks in, and you're watching this movie like, oh my god, what would I do if this was happening around me? Yeah, yeah. And again, it's just it's just that dose of reality. And again, mm -hmm. like um, guys, I know we're we're kind of like you know talking about a, a whole bunch of different uh, different things right now, but. This guy right here, Kochi Shiraishi, like th this is a guy who really I wish was kind of more well known. I'm actually really surprised that he is. I mean, he's even more cult out here. I would think that this guy's mm. work would kind of be celebrated a little bit. Like it, it seems like such a a prime thing for a label like Arrow or some kind of horror label to oh, pick God. up yeah. and yeah. throw out there because it, it really is the kind of stuff where I'm just like. I would think that there is an audience out here in the West for his work in particular. And you, and you know, one thing I would love, I would love it if they released his movies on like a VHS, like a special VHS oh. edition. So <laughs> like we could get that grimy kind of experience or just have that oh. kind of like, you know, because they do yeah. that sometimes with these older movies. Yes. Like, like they have like a special VHS style release. I would love that with that because I would love to watch them like some like if I found one of these on like some ratty like old like videotape from the nineties, I would think it was real to be honest. Oh, absolutely, I would think it was like I think it was like some like discarded doc Japanese like documentary that like was too shocking to be released. Which is the whole premise I know, but it's just it's just one of those things where like yeah, it was such cool sort of gimmick to play no. into. I think. I think I think you're right about that. And again, this is not trying to give any spoilers, but there are some pretty effect heavy stuff like in at the end of Noroi or something like that, right? Where mm -hmm. I think that the higher depth it is, the less effective it is. But, but yeah, if you're, yeah. <laughs> if you're watching it and, and I'm not and I'm not knocking his budget, I'm not even knocking what he did, no. but no, no. just taking it into consideration what you were saying about the griminess, I just made me realize about how just beautifully effective it is to just kind of see you see the shape of something you see like outlines but it's kind of like that blurred not sharp image quality and it again it adds to the realism and it uh yeah damn guys go check this guy out mm -hmm. <laughs> seriously mm -hmm. it's seriously good stuff find um, a movie find his find his movies on youtube or wherever you want to find them they're available um, I'm not. I'm not gonna do Matt's business where he's all like. <laughs> <laughs> find his find his movies. They're translated into English, or you can put you can put CC subtitles in there. Uh, then they either hard subbed like onto the movie film, or they're actually like um like just live YouTube ones, which are good quality. They're they're, they're written ones, and just put the video in like two like 144p. 
<laughs> and watch <laughs> you'll have a, it, it, it will feel even better like you know it will feel like really good like it will like you'll come out of it terrified but it will look and feel really good <laughs> yeah no i i i agree i agree and and james thank you for being direct about that because like this unfortunately as of the moment this seems to be the only way to actually you know watch this man's body of work um yeah. if there was a possibility of being able to support this guy financially for his stuff. Would love to do that. Uh, support official releases, all that stuff. But until that course, happens, yeah. you know, this is the only way we can see uh, such wonderfully nightmare cinema like this, you know? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. James, is there anything else you would like to add before we uh, wrap this up? Um, no, I'm, I've like I say I haven't seen the last movie, so I've kind of let it down there. I would have had more to talk about, but um, we, life is next, life. It's just another reason to come on next time. You know, we can talk more exactly, about exactly, yeah. You know, but no, um, just uh, thank you to the people who've turned up and have recommended stuff as well, especially uh, giving us some more. So next time we do one of these, we'll have more to talk about. Uh, if there's any questions from the chat about anything or any like specifics that they want to know about like the movies or any or if they have any recommendations for me and matt before we go that would be great yeah that would be awesome yeah anything you guys i in fact you know what james let's talk after the chat i i just got an idea for something i got an idea for something that might be kind of fun to do maybe once a month if you're down if if you know our schedules align and stuff i think i think it might be kind of fun to like uh um uh continue this in some way shape or form oh yeah 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 from Doomzilla, what is the best entry point for his films? Uh, definitely Naroy. Uh, if you want to know his style and get into him, Naroy is the best. Sadako versus Kayako is like a franchise movie, so I wouldn't recommend it. It's got that baggage of being like the versus movie of an era. So definitely start with Naroy and then carry on his like found footage movies. Um, you uh, And then I would... Um, going off that, I've like I say, his stuff's kind of hard to find. Uh, there is another movie. Uh, there's a couple other movies similar to that. There's a, a Korean Japanese one. Oh yeah, uh, he made. I believe it was he made it. Um, he did. I think it, wasn't that grotesque? No, that's not grotesque. Grotesque was fully Japanese. Um. Sorry, I've my mind's just blank. Oh, record of a sweet murder. That's what it was. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, Twenty fourteen yeah, yeah. Japanese South Korean horror film. Yeah, yeah, that one's that one's another good one in the same vein as Naroi. I would say um, his other stuff like Carved, uh, which is about like the woman with like the carved mouth, uh, the slit mouth woman. It's a urban legend in uh, Japan, and his Teke Teke movies are franchisey more of the same kind of you know like um sadako versus kayako so if you want more like tradi- like mainstream japanese horror they're fun to watch but definitely if you want to know his style and like his 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 version of horror what he likes to do definitely naroi uh occult and cult are the ones you need to check out for agreed agreed i, I do want to see uh, a record of sweet murder and it looks really really good um and i'm just looking at to see if there's any more questions uh we got joey horror films totally don't scare me <laughs> much much more much more man than i am joey um we got uh valerie in the house by the way hello valerie member of team savage cloverfield is good did you like cloverfield oh, yeah. Oh, I love Cloverfield. I saw it in cinemas uh, with my dad. Uh, that was such a really nice time because, like, me, me and my dad rarely went to see movies. Like, well, rarely go to see movies together. Right. Because um, he's he's just not, he, like, he's a passive movie watcher. Like, right. I'm an active, I sit there and I watch the movie, but he just kind of, like, sits there and, like, wants to have a beer and just watch it on the background while he's, like, on Facebook or whatever. He's an old man. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, I but I remember uh, yeah he took me to go see um, he, yeah he took me to go see Cloverfield because it was like two or three years after the King Kong movie that came out <clears throat> yeah and yeah I remember watching that with him and every, like every time the monster would come he'd like nudge me and be like hey, look it's the monster 
other thing because I was like, this is like 2008. So like I must have been about 13, 14 Jeez, at the time. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a young, I'm a young man, Matt. I'm sorry. You are a young man. <laughs> Quit rubbing it in my face. I'm not old. I'm not old. It's just I got white paint in my beard. <laughs> oh, that's what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> Gasly Theater says uh, she writes she's adaptation of Hell Girl was surprisingly fun too. Nice. I need to check that out. I've seen the anime and I've seen the TV series of the anime, but I've not actually seen his movie adaption. So Gasly Theater, once again, thank you. Lovely recommendation there. Yeah, check it out again. Gasly Theater, thank you for all the recommendations. And Gasly Theater, what is your avatar? That looks very familiar. I don't know. I'm 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 curious now. Doomzilla says, "Is there any way to see them officially?" I got to be completely honest. I don't know what the release date is. Is I know Noroi is not. Um, I need to jump into like to see if anything else. I would imagine maybe more of his. I mean, Sadako versus Kayako has. I don't know if it was officially released um, like on physical media, but there's a label out here, a streaming service called Shutter, that's like an old horror channel. And they had the distribution. You can watch it on guys. Shudder. What's that? You can watch Naroi on Shudder, I believe. Oh, there you, you go. Might be able to, you might, but I don't have Shudder. I can't afford too many streaming services. So, right. like, I just have Netflix for general stuff. Maybe it is there. You know, I, I probably should have looked that up before we started. But, I mean, if there's Oops, a we way. We just told everyone to do the illegal thing where there might be a legal way to do things. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's kind of like you know, it's 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 like a you know the cursed tape that you hear about. You can only get that you know fifth generation copy of the VHS in order to watch it. You know, it's exactly yeah. Um, and then we got a uh, uh, rainy Alex all the way from Australia. I just got home. No, Roy, yes, is good. I was out of milk. Sad face. Oh. <laughs> I hate I hate it when that happens too. I hate it when you run out of milk. Um, we got a. Uh, we got two more questions here, both of which actually had to do with Blair Witch Project. What is the better found footage movie, Cloverfield or the Blair Witch Project? What do you think? Ooh. Uh, okay, so I watched Blair Witch Project once. Oh, James, did you freeze? You came up? Yeah, there we go. Oh, you, you froze. You froze there. Uh oh, uh oh, it's happening, Matt. It it's is happening. happening. We're over <laughs> now. Yeah, the, the, the curse is starting. Oh, um, no. What were you saying about Blair Witch, though? Um, I, I miss the hype because I'm obviously, like I say, like when it came out, I was like three years old. So, like, I was not aware of its existence. So, watching it in retrospect as like a younger, um, as a younger person, like you know like like teenager i was like man this is kind of lame like you know like uh it's kind of like corny oh my god why are they just screaming all the time Ugh, sort of thing now i can watch it and i understand the hype but when people tell me like, it's like the exorcist oh it's the scariest movie of all time and then oh, you yeah. watch it like it's scary but it's not that scary <laughs> but if you ask someone from like if you ask someone who was a teenager in the 70s it's like it was mass hysteria the same yeah. with Blair Witch. I could talk to someone who was like a teenager or like in their twenties and then like in the nineties who saw that movie and were like, that was terrifying. But like I say, I was like, what? Oh no, it's 99. So I was six years old when it came out. So I wasn't really aware of that hype. But then if you ask me and I'd say like, oh, the Spanish found footage movie record is scary as all hell. Or cause that came out when I was like a teenager. Yeah. Or like paranormal activity is terrifying to me because it came out as a teenager. But I know if I showed it to a person now, like at that age, they'd be like, oh, what's this? It's kind of like, Ugh, sort of thing. <laughs> so for, for me, Cloverfield hit that sweet spot of being like a tight, kind of like, like tight, impactful, intense. My fight or flight kicked in several times. And it's a monster movie as well. And I love monster movies. I, I know we talk about J-horror a lot, but I've been here like for the singular point streams and stuff. And I've seen everyone around for like Godzilla stuff. I've done Godzilla stuff with Matt as well. Yeah. Um, talked about Godzilla stuff with him off camera and like on str other streams. Um, uh, so yeah, like I love the monster movie side of everything as well. So yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, I this is also kind of going into what uh, Jonathan was asking about when he was talking about Blair Witch Project. Um, I for me, Blair Witch is better than Cloverfield, but I also think that it was because I was a teenager when I saw Blair Witch. But like you, when I first saw it, um, I seriously thought it was dumb, and then I couldn't mm -hmm. get to sleep that night. You know, like it, it stuck with me. Um, mm. And uh, in the you know the the years following like what i love about it especially they also did um something called the curse of the blair witch which was a a documentary about you know kind of like the aftermath of, of what had happened for the movie they actually aired that uh -huh. on the sci-fi channel um as a uh you know as kind of a hype piece because it was just again putting it out there in the world this is real you know this is spooky Ooh. yeah yeah but there was also a book that came out called the blair witch dossier i believe which again, it was almost like uh, the I think it was like one of the parents or something of the of um, one of the students that you know disappeared. Um, but oh, it, was, yeah. it was almost framed like a scrapbook, you know what I mean? Of of just oh. their encounters, and it was just so fascinating. Like there was so much that was put into the mythology of um, of the film, and again, a lot of things unspoken. Um, that when you watch Blair Witch, you're just like, what, what's up with that? What's up with the rocks? What's up with the, you know, what's up with Heather or Mike, I'm sorry, in the corner when Heather comes down the stairs? Like, what's up with that, yeah. you know? And then you remember, oh, yeah, that child killer Rustin Pard used to do that because in the beginning of the movie, they were talking about that or something. Um, so yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed that. Didn't enjoy the video games so much. Uh, certainly didn't enjoy <laughs> Book of Shadows or the recent Wingard remake. Um, oh yeah i well i book of shadows had like a lot of production problems from what i heard from what i've read up on it it was awful it was awful um but yeah i'm, I'm a i'm a blair witch fan uh i i wish i still had the book because mm -hmm. like i i wouldn't mind like going in there and just like reading up about the lore of, of blair witch but it was a movie that really affected me um in, in positive ways it really it of course, just yeah showed me the the effectiveness of the kind of horror that we're talking about tonight, you know? So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I thought it looked familiar. It's inspired by Junji Ito, uh, by Junji Ito Tome image. Yeah, it looked like Junji Ito. That's why I was wondering about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tomei's good. Tomei's good. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, this is another one. The Ritual. Oh, The Ritual. Know? It's on my list. Always on my list. Everything's I on my list. Like that one. <laughs> It, it, it'll it horror monsters uh, the whole nine yards oh um, yeah oh i really want to see actually talk about the ritual um it looks really good <clears throat> but there's there's apparently a new um Guillermo del toro movie coming out soon which is um about uh skinwalkers um oh. and i have and it has the same kind of style or the same look as the ritual yeah um and i'm googling the name now because i've kind of forgotten it <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah that looks kind of interesting film i there we go. know about that actually there's one more movie i'm going to recommend and then after we find out the game of the one we can wrap this up but sure 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 the Endless, and I've talked to you about this before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Endless is one that you guys should go, or is one that you guys should go check out. It's very, very much in the Lovecraftian horror kind of thing. And uh, Moorhead and Benson are the directors. They did another movie called uh, Synchronic, um, and now they just got attached to the Moonlight or Moon Knight uh, TV show that Marvel's doing. And I, I hope that they're going to be able to still have their creative control because they're they're a, one of my favorite filmmakers currently um really really good stuff del toro skinwalker film sign me up del toro Ant sweet. antlers antlers what is it antlers oh yeah i did yeah i remember seeing the trailer for that yeah, sorry. Um, it's not directed; it's produced by Gamilla del Toro. Let me let me see if I can bring that up just real quick because I remember. Is there a, mm. is that out or is that coming out? It's coming out in uh, Halloween of this year because it, of COVID, it got delayed. Of course, it did. Let me just see, just so I can show. I did see a trailer for it 
in either late 2019 or early 2020. Okay, let me just get this and then we'll just share this real quick for everybody so they can see this because the poster's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, Scott Cooper. Looks like he's the director. And uh, yeah, yeah, this one is the old one. It says in April. Yeah, it was supposed to be released April of last year, in fact. So, yeah, no, because I remember I saw it and I was like, oh, this actually looks really interesting. This looks really good. And then obviously everything happened and I was like, oh, okay. So it's not coming out for like another year now. Good stuff. Good freaking Ooh, stuff. Oh, got another question here from Valerie. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Halloween, thoughts on uh, Halloween kills? Um, I, I, you know, I didn't see the reboot, the the new reboot of Halloween, or like the sequel reboots that have come out. I didn't watch Rob Zombie's movies. Um, uh, I've obviously seen like the original. Well, I've seen the original. I think I've seen like the first four Halloween movies, and then I saw number six as well. What's the one with Buster Rhymes in it when he beats up Michael Myers? That I don't even remember. Dude, don't tell anybody, but I haven't even seen the original. What? Yeah, I haven't seen the original. I suck. Oh, stop. Stop. You what? like The Ring 2 and Space Godzilla and Cloverfield. And I, I didn't even give you any crap about Cloverfield. Yeah, but <laughs> at, least, at least I'm cultured enough to receive <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Sort of my, my <laughs> oh man resurrection that's it resurrection that movie is hilarious um i used is to get came out like the late 90s yeah it's like early 2000s it's the one where like it's, it's like <laughs> buster rhymes karate fighting michael myers and it's just like what's going on with this franchise wow. and did you see the did you see the first movie and it's just like it goes from like it's really tense, like dark thriller to like Buster Rhymes beating the crap out of Michael Myers. It's hilarious. And thank you, Rainy J. Oh, I, I know, I know. The, the chat will never support me. And Alex like is like, what's wrong with Space Godzilla? You know, <laughs> what isn't wrong with Space Godzilla, Rainy? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Honestly, James, I think we should do a Space Godzilla stream sometime because I we've talked about it off camera all the time. But yeah, yeah, um, having. What you know, having that appreciation for kind of like movies that I would say, uh, like their popularity isn't all that great, you know what I mean? Um, like Space Godzilla or something, but you know, I've talked to you about it off camera before, yeah. Just listening to, um, to you talk about it is really interesting because you bring up a lot of good points, you know, and uh, it's I can't just sit here and dismiss it, it's fun to joke around, you know, but yeah, yeah. It's really cool to to again hear. It's like I actually like this movie because of A, B, and C, and it's not just because it's like it's because Space Godzilla is like I don't know, you, you know. Yeah, you no, I know you mean. reasons. <laughs> so, yeah, and Doomzilla says I'm with Rainy, and Isabella is like what? Yeah, see, they love you, not so much me. Well, I'm used to it. I'm used to. It. I'm used to being the bad guy, you know. Oh, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sorry, actually, I just remembered going back to Halloween Kills. Um, I've seen the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and um ha halloween halloween kills it looks interesting i feel like they're going kind of in the deep end with like the slasher stuff like it's becoming more of like a jason Voorhees, and like you know it's more about like just the brutality of the kills but i also like i do like michael myers like unstoppable nature and like that was yeah. the thing like that was the thing that scared me as a kid. Like you can gun him down and he'll just keep coming towards you. Yes. Um, I think they're leaning into a supernatural element in the trailer. They're like, Oh, the more he kills, the stronger he gets. Interesting. And so that's something that I'm a little bit like, eh, okay. I kind of enjoyed like the ambiguity of he's the boogeyman. Like the whole boogeyman yeah. thing is like something that's prevalent through the movies. You would know if you saw the first one, Matt, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I want to ch I want to catch up with the Halloween movies. The thing is, in Japan, uh, horror movies come out in the summer for some reason here a lot of the time. It's interesting. Don't know why. Apparently, it's... Um, how can I say? It's kind of like a cultural thing here. Um, I don't know why, but there's a lot more movies. Like, It came out in the summer, 
like the both the it movies like the it two came out. so yeah and the, the 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 first halloween reboot came out during the summer and i'm like but it's yeah. called halloween it, why didn't you release it in halloween that makes more sense but japan was like eh, whatever just release it in summer <laughs> It's like, this doesn't make sense to my Western mind. What's going on? <laughs> Don agrees with you. Michael Myers was always more of a stealthy ninja-like killer. The newer reboot is going the Jason Voorhees route. Personally, I like Michael Myers when he was Austin Powers, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I'm kidding. Frank. <laughs> Jim Zilla says that stupid summer never works for horror. Halloween time is the way to go. So. I, 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 Doom Zilla, I understand, but I think it's a cultural thing here in Japan. I will say, like, I don't understand it. It's a cultural thing. Um, I've asked my students who I teach about it, and um, they can't really explain it. It's just a cultural thing. So, yeah, I understand to us as Westerners, like, it's called Halloween. Surely it would take place in the autumn hot, like, when it's cold and dark, but... Yeah, it's a Japanese thing. I don't understand it. I'm not part of the culture. So, yeah, I wish I could explain more. <laughs> It'd be interesting to find out, but I'm, I'm like to like expand upon that. Maybe maybe we can look into it for next time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this from uh, uh, Spikes Ag Agita, if I'm saying that right. Jason X, the one in space, that was fun. I actually have a soft spot for Jason X. It is oh, so stupid, yeah. but I love yeah. Jason X. I like Freddy I versus Jason. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, they're they're stupid, but they're fun. You know, um, that that's I, that's what I'll say. They they don't really enter the realm of like you know good horror movies or anything. Oh, but God, you know, no. getting to see David Cronenberg taken out by Jason is kind of fun. <laughs> you know, in some yeah. ways. Yeah, so. I think as well. Like when you get like the franchises at those points, like J like the Jason movies and the Freddy movies, like they were just so stupid and like the stuff it was so ridiculous. That it just got to the point, it's like, they're doing a Versus movie. What did you expect? Yeah. Like, you know, the, like the Versus movies. Yeah. Rainey says it best. It's peak, like, noughties fashion. Like, you know, <laughs> and it's just so, like, it's just so, like, perfect. <laughs> it's just perfectly that. Valerie, Valerie's got me in a gotcha moment. Matt likes Ooh. Jason X, but not GVK. When did I ever say I don't like GVK? No, Matt. Are we about to find? Are we about to have another disagreement? <laughs> <laughs> I never said I didn't like GVK. All I asked was, why is there a sun in the middle of the of the Earth, and then everyone jumps down my throat about it? That's it. All I did was question. I have the wrong opinion. I am a victim. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Anyways. Do you think we should wrap this up? Do you want to field some more questions? What do you think? I'm 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 doing good. It's just like it's like early afternoon here. I've got a day off for the next. I've got like a weekend in the middle of the week, so I'm I'm off. I don't have much to do. How do you feel, Matt? <clears throat> um, let's go with just a couple more questions. Maybe we can uh, shut this off at about one thirty. Uh, yeah, that's be fine. One and a half. Um, we're kind of like we're kind of off the topic of, of what we've been talking about, but all this talk about horror movies and just the the different stuff. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. So, chat. Um, as long as you keep fielding questions for the next seven minutes, we'll keep going. If you, if there's nothing else, no problem. You know, uh, this yeah. will not be the last time that James shows up here for sure. Nope. Um, personally, James, I think what would be fun. In fact, you you know we can. Uh, oh, you got a question already. But nope. let me re well, real quick before I get to the Mistress Rainy, um, I think it'd be fun to bring you on monthly and we can do a monthly stream where maybe we have a list of movies that we can check out or maybe just one that you and I can discuss. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We can watch it on our own and then have the stream about it, like recommend it or something. And then just yeah. it adds a little bit of diversity to like what we're talking about. More and focus. Yeah. Because then even though we're not we're we're talking about five right movies at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we're a kaiju channel, it's always fun to, you know, have a have, talk about other genre and stuff, you know? So Of course, yeah. I think, okay, then, if we're going on that angle, maybe, obviously, if you catch up with uh, the found footage stuff, maybe I'll, I haven't, I still haven't seen Cult. And I take, you haven't seen, maybe that could be our review kind of one. That yeah, we do yeah, together. yeah, yeah. I think that'd be really fun. I'd be down for that. Um. Rainey asks, James, do you have any favorite Aussie horror films? Because she hails from the Outback. 
Ah, oh, well, uh, so Aussie horror movies. Um, I've seen uh, Razorback, which is like a creature feature, like v very stylistic. It was directed she by the, that one. Oh yeah, it was the di the director the same guy who was the Duran Duran director, like movie video director, like Highlander. amazing, amazing. This that movie is like visually one of the most stunning, crazy sort of movies I've ever seen. Love it. Um, I've seen things like um, Hounds of Love. Uh, well, I saw a bit of Hounds of Love. That's a more recent one. There's a little bit, you know, like revengey movie kind of torture -y sort of thing. Didn't yeah. really dig it, but I appreciated, like, I know the story based off of it. And um, uh, I haven't seen Long Weekend. Uh, I haven't seen Long Weekend. That is um, one that we should do. I think that you, I, I would like to venture a guess and say, I think you would like that. It Just going by what we've talked about before. I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, okay. Uh, but apart from, like, I think some other Aussie... Sorry, I've got to Google it because maybe I have... Um, maybe I have seen a movie, but, like, I didn't realize it was uh, Australian, if you know what I mean. Oh, Wolf oh, Creek. Yeah, yeah. How did I forget Wolf Creek? I've seen Wolf Creek, yeah. You're uh, her Wolf favorite Creek guest now, by the way. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah. Oh, Blackwater. Yeah, I've seen Blackwater as well. The Babadook. Of course, I've seen the Babadook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm looking at this now, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've actually seen a lot of. I've seen a lot of Australian horror movies. <laughs> I think that's the thing because, like, in England, like, uh, obviously, like, history and stuff, we're quite close to Australia, so like, we get a lot of releases from Australia. Quite nice releases, sort of thing. Um, Rogue as well. Rogue is a good one. It's like a crocodile horror one supposedly based on true events yeah 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 but no so rainy those are the ones that i've seen i've seen quite a lot i guess but um um i would definitely like to see some more for sure definitely think that we should put long weekend on the list i i can i'll i could see if i could hook you up with a copy um, nice one Oh, what was this? Well, um, I've seen an, oh, I saw like an old exploitation one from like Australia. It was a British Australian one. Oh, that was it. Um, Turkey Shoot. Turkey Shoot. Shoot. Yeah. Um, that's like a grimy, like video nasties one. That's, that, but it's also kind of an action movie as well. It's basically um that's the Aussie yeah the Aussie Croc trilogy yeah 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 that's that's it <laughs> um but yeah uh, this movie Turkey Shoot is not for the faint of heart it does it's pretty grimy but it's also pretty pretty interesting uh pretty like it's basically the most dangerous game but like a grimy like 80s horror like slasher reboot that's awesome yeah um, that's really fun I, my my question for you though is: Have you seen the Howling Three Marsupials? I have as well. Yeah. Oh god, I watched that. <laughs> I watched that. I I watched that at university in an altered state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was an interesting watching experience. Um, I oddly that I I've seen, I know I've seen the Howling movies. But for some reason, that's the one I remember the most because it was always on TV around Halloween time. And it's the and weirdest one. Yeah. It's like it's always the third movie. Like, what of it? Halloween 3 mm -hmm. is, the, is like a weird spin-off. The Marsupials is like a weird spin-off. Like, you know, and I just love it. It's just like, it's so bizarre and strange. <laughs> it really is. It really freaking is. Um, from Brian, which U.S. horror remake do you prefer, The Ring or The Grudge? I have not seen the uh, original remakes. I've only seen the original Japanese versions. Uh, really? Sorry, Brian. yeah, I, I I only watched the Grudge remake because I like 2020 remake because yeah, I was yeah, bored. Yeah. But like the ones that came out in the 2000s, I've never seen the American versions of the 2000s remakes. I've only ever seen the Japanese originals. I would be very curious to see what you think. Personally speaking, I think yeah. they actually, especially Ring, I think they're pretty respectable in comparison to the originals. You know, I would even, yeah, yeah. 
I would even say the the original, the Sam Raimi grudge, um, the original. What was that 2005? Maybe it came out 2006. Hmm. Um, makes a little bit more sense than like the uh, Juwan, you know, the or Juwan the Grudge, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's the third one in the series, right? There's Juwan yeah. the Cursed One, Juwan the Cursed yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we get it, about. <laughs> right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in that vicinity. Um, it's the first I, I it's official one, yeah. Um, you know, Ring Two out here. Uh, was horrible. That was the one that Nakata directed. Uh, the oh, is that the one with CGI ideas in it? Yes. I've seen that clip. I've seen the clip, but I haven't watched the movie. Horrible. The one good thing that came out of it was that there is a short film of which I think you would also really enjoy called Rings. That um, It's about these teenagers that almost basically use the curse as a drug. You know? And how... And how they kind of like almost like get high off of it and kind of like what they do. It's really it's quite interesting. And then um back when in 2017, it, what what's that? When did it come out? Rings? Around the same time as Ring Two. Um so 2006. Oh, okay, cool. Because um there's Rings 2017, and that was horrible from all accounts. <laughs> That's the, that's the end of the very- I, I actually strangely enjoyed Rings. I would never say it's good, but there's okay. aspects in there that I thought were kind of fun. Better I've than not, Ring Two. I've, I've like I said, I've not seen any. I've not seen any of the American ones before. Um, yeah, I, I would. I would never. I would never recommend Ring Two or even Rings 2017. But as a Ring fan, that one Rings was 2017 was way more bearable than. Uh, you know, some of the other sequels that came out, Sadako 3D yeah, I, and, and the like. Oh, oh God. Uh, uh, that movie. <laughs> oh, God, that movie. Just, when you say the name, it's wild because the main actress in it is like also the um, Kayako Ann Patterson from yeah. like uh, Jingo. And like, she's totally different in this movie. And it's crazy, like, when I see her in it. Um, but actually, going back to the rings, going back to rings, it was, um, I loved the cold opening. Well, like that, sh- the plane thing was really yes. cool. But I heard it's like a cold opening, so it's not really part of the story or anything like that. And I'm a bit like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not really, it's not great. It, I, I was um, happy, I was happier with it than I was with, you know, the ring too. I mean, that, that, that much I'll say. But okay. I really can't say much more than that because it was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was something else. But All right, yeah, no, no, I'll have to check it out. I need to. I'm being a bit of a snobby weeb when I guess when it comes to those J horror stuff. So I need to start branching. Well, out you also have a, a, a whole list of other movies that you want to watch, not just yeah. you know, like like just you know. So oh yeah, go go watch the American remakes. I'd, I'd much rather you see Long Weekend before you get to Rings 2017. You know. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> But I think we had a few more questions, Matt. Let's see. Da, 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 Spike Segetti said something there. Who, oh wait, who was it? Uh, Spike Segetti. Segita. Uh, Spike Segetti. Event Horizon. Hey, Event Horizon. <laughs> yes, I've seen Event Horizon. I was like a teenager when it came out, so I watched it, and um, I've forever haunted by um, Sam Neil not having eyes <laughs> because. Obviously, I grew up with him. He Sam Neill was um, uh, was uh, Doctor Grant, wasn't he? In Jurassic yeah. Park, my favorite movie of all time. So seeing Doctor Grant with like pulling out his eyes, I was just like, "Oh my god, what is this movie?" So <laughs> were you like taking off your glasses, like when when Grant first sees the Brachiosaur, you know, yeah. just, like, completely shocked and appalled. <laughs> Yeah, pulls out his eyes instead like wait where's this movie <laughs> and it's like i it's like when i saw um uh his john carpenter movie he was in uh he did that movie with john carpenter forgot it now sam neil oh, i don't remember that one i haven't uh, seen all that. Well, i've seen some john carpenter in the mouth of madness that was it in the mouth of madness oh how was that uh, he he's the lead actor in it and like yeah once like once again that's one of those movies where like i'm like why is dr grant like going crazy and like trying to kill people <laughs> and this is just like, so, yeah, it's really weird attachment i have to sam neil as dr alan grant <laughs> that's awesome yeah i i gotta agree with doomzilla i i feel like it's it's 
missed opportunity. Mm. I think the premise is great. I really oh, God, like yeah. it. Um, I, I just that was done by the same guy that did uh, Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil. Yeah, right? W. S. Um, Anderson, Paul W. S. Yeah. Anderson. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, like I, I think Event Horizon is probably his best movie. Yeah, I, I could, out I of could, his like I Hollywood that. schlock kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, oh, he's uh, British. Oh, he's British as well. Sorry, guys, he's English. <laughs> If you like it, if you don't like his movies, I'm sorry. I apologize on behalf of England. <laughs> yes, you have to apologize for your entire nation. If I gotta apologize for mine, we're gonna be here for a little while. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> especially but yeah, I'm agreeing with the chat here. Um, Event Horizon, uh, watching it as an adult, definitely lost potential and a lot of studio interference as well, which is a shame. Yeah. A lot, a lot, like a big shame. Because there's so much that got lost. There's so much that was um, taken out of it that looks really interesting. I've seen some work prints floating around, like, online. Ooh. And, um, yeah, it's very disappointing that it didn't through, like come to fr fruition in the way it should have. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, then from Jonathan, have you seen any of the Universal Classic Monsters? And if so, what are your favorites? Um, I'm, I'm a Wolfman stan, uh, in my house, we stand the Wolfman. Um, <laughs> uh, I love, I love, um, I, I kind of like that body horror of werewolves and like that kind of like man versus beast kind of, uh, thing. But in terms of universal, I used to watch them when I was like a little kid, like my nan yeah. put them on cause they were like, they weren't gory. Whereas like hammer horror gets gory or like there's a bit yeah. of blood and it wasn't like my parents were like prudish, but you know, so I didn't access the hammer, like the British stuff before. So like I vaguely remember watching Wolfman. I've seen Frankenstein. Uh, I've seen Dracula, I think, but my favorite has got to be creature from the black lagoon, basically out of all of it. Like creature from the black lagoon is cause it's a monster. It was yeah. the one that I would watch again and again and again. And it's like the the and even the sequels, like Revenge of the Creature or whatever it is. I love that movie. It's so fun. It's so <laughs> dumb. Like it's like the B movie monster, and like oh, yeah. it's it, it's. But I love it. I think it, I think it's a fun movie. Uh, but, Monster Squad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I love Monster Squad. Yeah, Monster it's great. great. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about Frankenstein? Says Joey. Uh, yeah, 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 Frankenstein. Frankenstein's good. Um, like I say, I watched them when I was very young. I don't really remember them. Frankenstein doesn't... I, see, I, I'm i an English student as well. I studied Frankenstein at university and stuff. So, like, I I just... I'm done with some of this gothic, like, <laughs> that, like, like you know what I mean? Yep. It's just, like, I've absorbed it so much and it's part of like my learning history <laughs> so it's just like it's <laughs> it's part of like my trauma of school so i appreciate i do appreciate um uh frankenstein but i'm more attuned with like the novel um over totally. the actual movie itself sort of thing um so my kaiju says wolfman rules monster squad rules Monster Squad is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Don says Wolfman, Wolfman has, has nerds. We, 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 we cannot bring up Monster Squad without, you know, bringing that up. Um, yeah. Somebody, I just want to say here, he says uh, from Spice Spaghetti, uh, or Spaghetti, I'm sorry if we're saying your name wrong. Oh, yeah, Hellraiser, cool movies. Hellraiser was one of those movies, dude, that the practical effects grossed me out. And they were oh. done so well. The regrowing scene? Yeah, the just the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. It was nasty as all hell, and but like, I, I'm praising it because it, again, it was all practical effects made to look yeah. real. It wasn't CGI yeah. garbage. No, I know, and also as well, Clive Barker, British British writer. Just I'm gonna just to claim back from Paul Douglas Anderson. We've got Clive Barker as well, so yeah. Thank you can say thank you. It's fine. <laughs> there was this one movie. Um, a Clive Barker film I wanted to ask you about because oh. I've only, only seen it once and it was about I need to find what the, the name of it was but it was um, there's like a underground like village of monsters that were trying to, to stay away oh, from um, Night Freaks or Night Breed. 
Nightbreed. Nightbreed. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's really interesting. That movie, um, I read a bit about Clive Barker. Clive Barker is a gay. And of course, yeah. he was gay in like the um, the eighties, which of course, I mean, yeah. Um, so um, that was his whole. His, that movie was kind of like his like reaction to like anti-gay uh, sentiments and stuff like that. So it's re- that movie is really interesting. Uh, a lot like um, it's kind of popular. Like I know a couple like uh, of my friends who are like uh, LGBTQ plus or whatever. Uh, who, are, like, who like horror. And it's like one of their favorites because it's like that counterculture and like the the wow. a- allegory of the freak showness of like yeah, the way yeah, that yeah. so yeah, very interesting. I um I, I saw it one, back when Blockbuster uh, Blockbuster was a video store out here. I don't know if you guys had them. Oh yeah, we have Blockbuster as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they used to have the, that mail in DVD service, and I remember getting Nightbreed there, and I remember liking it. But mm. uh, I mean, it's been dude, it's it's had to have been. 15 years since I've seen it. Like I wouldn't mind yeah, rewatching yeah. that, especially not to sound bizarre, but watching it in the context and the lens that you just provided, because I had no idea about that. And yeah, that actually, that's interesting. Like it's, it's incredibly unfortunate, but it's, it's really interesting that that yeah. was able to, to come out, you know? Um, Summit Kaiju says, anyone ever watch silver bullet? Who is the werewolf is genius. Have you yeah. Seen yeah, yeah, I, I, I watched it when I was like a kid, like, um, because, uh, it also as well as a De Laurentiis's production, uh, as well, a guy who did King Kong seventy six. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I was like, oh, he he did King Kong seventy six, so I'm gonna like this movie, and I like it, uh, but it's one of those movies where like I've kind of got to be in that mood to watch it. Because sometimes, right. like the dra- family drama stuff, slows stuff down for me. Really slows down if I'm not in the mood to watch it. If I'm tired, uh, but the werewolf stuff's really fun. The bit in the church, Matt, have you seen it? I have not. Okay, I'm not going to spoil it for you because it is actually it's an interesting first watch. There's yeah. a there's a moment in the church. Uh, nobody in chat spoil it for Matt either. But when you watch it, it's visually once again visually striking really dark and nightmarish and really terrifying so yeah i it, oh, it's cool. it's worth a watch worth a watch we need to trade lists i want you to make a list of movies for me and then i'll make a list of movies for you and we'll we'll go back and forth i just ask you not to put space godzilla 12 times on there that's the one thing I, I, <laughs> that's I, my I, list now that's that's my list is gonna be <laughs> space godzilla 12 space times. Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> um and just, uh, j- just again, Valerie, she says, oh, cool, I'm trans, so I'll have to check that one out. Talk about Nightbreed. Yeah, you know, um, I- I'm not trying to sound weird, but, you know, I-, I do, like, representation in films, especially with something like you're just talking about with Nightbreed, is, like, I feel like that is so much more effective than, you know, just, like, putting some of these things front and center to kind of, like, how we do nowadays, like, the subtlety of it, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and maybe, maybe I'm speaking from a place that I shouldn't be speaking from, but Again, like I really enjoyed Nightbreed for what it was. Like it was really, mm. the, and and much of the same. I don't know if it was the same team, but much of the effects and stuff are are uh, very much like Hellraiser. You know, just done very mm. well. Um, and I didn't even know that Clive Barker was was gay. So again, yeah, I don't know. yeah. It, they, it's just what it is. It's one of those things that um, like it's like a, there's a it's part of the counterculture, I guess, in England as well. Like uh, like uh, Judas Priest. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gay. Like you know. So that's kind of like there's always there's always been like I guess in English culture like the counterculture has kind of been accepting of that, not so brilliantly accepting all the time, but like you know it's always kind of had that you fit in here because we're all seen as like outcast sort of thing, and that's the whole point of Nightbreed in a sort of like sense um, as well. Uh, oh, Enshama has a question for me. Oh, we got Enshama here. Just real quick before I get to Raf, um, where is Raf by the way? I'm just. Oh, wait, 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 Raph, where are you at? What, what, what question are you seeing from Raph? Uh, Koji. Oh no, I see it. I see it. I, just real fast. It's better to be an outcast than it is to be accepted. You know, and like yeah, yeah. that's coming. That's coming from an outcast personally. Like that was me. Like it. Like we need to be accepting of everybody. And I think it's really cool to be able to discover movies like Nightbreed that just so happens to, you know, have this extra. I don't want to say slant, but it has this extra 
meaning allegory, to it, I guess. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you I, know, I know. Valerie, Valerie, definitely, if you watch it, um, it'd be interesting to hear what you feel as being someone who is trans. Like, how do you see it and do you identify with it? Because, like I say, in the horror circles online, a lot of people do identify Nightbreed as, like, that style of movie. Obviously, I'm talking as a straight guy sort of thing, so I can't say too much on it. But, yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, Valerie, in the next stream if you pop in. It's it, she's a, a regular on her after dark, so I hope she gets to watch it. And heck, maybe we can do a Nightbreed episode. We can bring her in to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be cool. If, because, like, like I said, I haven't rewatched it in forever. It'd be cool to rewatch it. <coughs> Was this the uh, question you're talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, techie, techie, techie films. Yeah, I think uh, they're they're kind of in the same vein as like um, what you call it. Um, his like Sadako versus Kayako. They're like hyper horror. I call them because it's so crazy and so out there. Like. There's a scene where two high school girls are walking across a bridge. They see Teki Teki. And all of a sudden, she looks at her friend and the body is, like, half of her body is just, like, whoosh, flying through the air. There's, like, a geyser of blood. So, yeah, I think they're crazy fun. I don't take them too seriously. Uh, and, yeah, definitely um, uh, a lot of fun. A lot of uh, interesting just visuals and just crazy hyper Japanese editing and stuff like that. It's super cool. Haven't seen the new Invisible Man, but what are your thoughts on it? Asked Valerie. I have not seen it either. I've heard I things. Seen it either, but it looks really good. I want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's on the list. It's on the list. There should be a movie called Matt vs. Space Godzilla. <laughs> LOL. There are more um, things I dislike than Space Godzilla. I just like giving James a hard time about it, but I shouldn't give him a hard time about it. Space Godzilla <laughs> is a movie filled with good ideas. Definitely. Never yes. quite never quite achieves like what it's capable of doing in my opinion and james looks um, like he has thoughts and um, i agree but i agree in some ways and disagree in others but this is a space because of the stream we've already got off the exactly. original topic we, we've got so far <laughs> off the original topic now but uh P P rainy one moment i uh, dog soldiers i could talk for hours i've noticed people are talking about rawhead rex matt have you seen rawhead rex rawhead rex if you know the Clive Barker one, the adaption oh, is the, the adaption is pretty terrible, but also kind of fun. The the yeah. novel, the same with Silver Bullet. There's like a graphic novel of it. The graphic novels of both those stories are amazing. Really, um, Rawhead Rex in the graphic novel is like this horrible, like you know how like Alien is a metaphor for like a man's private parts. Yeah. Rawhead Rex is kind of the same. It's like the male libido versus like the world. It's like, I guess nowadays we'd call it like toxic masculinity or whatever yeah. it is. So it's that kind of idea, but back in the 80s sort of thing. And uh, yeah, really, really good like graphic novel. The movie? <laughs> but really, it's, it's, one of the, it's funny. If you see that, like, I love the attack on, it's set in Ireland. So there's like a there's like a camp of like gypsies, and Rawhead Rex attacks a gypsy camp, and it's amazing. I love it. It's That's wonderful. Awesome. It's so fun. It's campy. It's campy. I know. I need to check it out. I need. There's so many things that I still need to get around to, uh, reading wise, like book wise. Mm -hmm. Like there's graphic novels up the yin yang that I would love to check out. Oh. You know. A lot of Junji Ito stuff I still need to read. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, actually, Matt, Rawhead Rex was the reason why he made Hellraiser himself. Because if the production companies like botched Rawhead Rex so badly. And Clive yeah. Barker hated it. He was like, I'm just going to make my own damn adaption. And then that's Good why he made him. Hellraising. So, uh, Hellraising? Hellraiser. So uh, I was thinking Van Helsing. <laughs> <laughs> together. That'd be a cool movie. But anyway, yeah, so like that's it. why we got Hellraiser out of it. Hellraiser, like, I need to rewatch that one too. I just remember the effects just being so, mm. again, sorry not to go on to another tangent, but just being no, so no, it's fine, it's fine. effective. Um, and then we had Rainy talking about dog soldiers. Yeah, sorry, Rainy. Yeah, dogs. Oh, I love I dog, gotta, soldiers. I dog soldiers. I have I saw a little bit of it. I heard it was good. Sorry, I'm trying to find Ray's original I did the descent. Here. But yeah, you like Dog Soldiers? Oh, I love I love that movie. It's um it's I love it. Um it's by, like I said, it's the same guy who did the descent. Do you have you seen the descent, Matt? Yes. I have thoughts mm -hmm. on that. It's not a badly made movie, but it wasn't one of my favorites. Okay, fair enough. Uh Dog Soldiers is a little bit more loose. It's a lot yeah. more freer. 
Um, it's a lot more low budget as well, and it's very British, very British movie, and that's why I like it so much. It's like the character dynamics are so like it's banter, it's like it's squaddies, like, and I've got friends who are squaddies, so like it's like it's their character in the movie, yeah. and yeah, it's just I love that movie so much. It's a wild ride. It's a it's crazy. Like there's werewolf action, and it's so even though it's low budget, the werewolves look really good. It's one of those movies that uses its style to its effect. And it's also got one of my favorite actors, uh, Sean Pertwee, in it as well. I love Sean Pertwee. Um, he's the son of John Pertwee. He was like the third doctor in Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love all that kind of, I love that connection. I just, such a fun movie, man. It's a, it's a thrill ride horror movie, like thrill ride action horror in like the same veins of like Aliens. Yeah, uh, Pops just said it there. Like it's like Aliens, but with werewolves in the countryside. Love it. I uh, you'd you'd probably love it as well, Matt. I I remember. I feel like I missed the boat on that one because I feel like that was at a time where I should have jumped on it because I probably mm. would have ended up liking. It. I heard the sequel's not very good. There's no sequel. There's no sequel. There's no, sequel, to sequel? It. Thought... no, they were they were going to do it, uh, but it never came to fruition. And then he made the descent, and that kicked off his career even more, like in a different angle, sort of thing. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> that makes sense. I, I need to check it out. Um, have you ever seen any of the Phantasm movies? Oh, I've never seen the Phantasm movies. I want to. <laughs> I, I was uh, I was this close to seeing them. I I, I had a an ex who used to work for uh, Channel Awesome. She, I, I, yeah, I don't know what she's up to these days, but she reviewed all of those movies. Um, and uh, she said she really liked the first one, but then it got like progressively more silly as the, the yeah. sequels go on. But that's kind of like yeah, yeah. Isn't that what happens with everything. You know, oh, gotcha. like, on forever um and uh i like this do you like an american werewolf in london also what does a british werewolf look like <laughs> um well american werewolf in london is a great movie uh obviously it has the transformation the yeah. transformation and and even now i'm like amazed by it uh like you know I'm, I'm still amazed like how they did it and reading up on it and just the simple things like the pulling of the hair re- it shot in reverse. And I was like, that's genius. That's yeah. like, you would, you just, you, you would just do it with like CGI now, but like yeah. just thinking like, Oh, just reverse the shot and it's there. So I love the creativity behind it. I haven't seen it in a few years or for a few years, give like five or six years. So I don't know how I view it now, like as an older like as I'm kind of getting older, but as a teenager, I definitely liked it. Um, I like, I love the angle that he sees the people he's killed, and I love, I love the bit in the movie theater, like in the porn theater, when, it, when they're like, "You could try and shoot yourself in the head." Oh yes, but when you <laughs> that, I love that. That's once again, that's British humor. Like that's that kind of British humor that I just love, and like the sardonic kind of guy, like you just jump in front of the tube train and stuff like that. Just like, just, I love that kind of humor. Um, but as, in terms of a British werewolf, I don't know. Maybe he's got like a monocle and a top hat, and, uh, <laughs> and but he's like in a tatty suit, and he uh, comes over for afternoon tea and then eats your grandma. I don't know. Make theory videos like Space Godzilla. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're you're gonna kill me after this stream's done. I know that. <laughs> you, you'll come to Japan on holiday. You'll be in Tokyo, and I'll just silly like appear around the corner, and be like, "Hi." Man. I know. I'll be I'll be like, "Oh no." <laughs> I'd be mean, like stroking a space god to the figure, like, hey, <laughs> dude. No. Like, no, I. You have no idea. I'm, I'm sure you do. We talked about it, but like, I, I want to get out there so bad. Still, fingers crossed for like the end of the year. And if you're down, would love to hang and you know just go do something or whatever. Because oh like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I. If they were showing it, I would love to watch Space Godzilla in theaters with you. It doesn't even have to be subtitled, you know, just the original, like, yeah. like give me a 35 millimeter print, you know, and a Toho like cinema. Like that sounds like a hell of a good time to me. Oh <laughs> yeah. I've done that a couple of times with like the Gamera movies this year. Yeah. Just one, and uh, it's it's great fun. It's so much it, it's it's it makes you relive your childhood. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um I have not seen this movie. Do you know? Have you heard of this? It's Phenomena. a Argento movie. I think Phenomena is the one with the with the girl who's psychic and she can speak to bugs or something like that. I believe is the premise, but I never watched it because um, 
I it was what it was in his latest series where he started kind of dropping off and um was getting a it, like his movies started, he started using his daughter in a lot of his movies as she was getting older and they became like vanity projects and yeah I kind of lost interest in it yeah phenomena yeah I've seen it advertised but I never watched it is it any good something I do if you let us know I need to watch Dario Argento um uh one of our uh, regulars in the chat here actually sent me Suspiria on DVD Ooh. and I have it in a pile because I watch Max and I are like we, we like horror movies a whole lot so like we watch mm -hmm. them a lot Paige will watch horror movies if they're like good but she's not like you know chomping at the bit to see them sure, but sure. Dario Argento I think I've only he did zombie right no that's Lucio Fulci okay sorry I'm messing up my Italian filmmakers here um I need to watch his stuff that's all I'm saying yeah um, uh, and then he says, "Yeah, okay, cool. I'll check out Phenomena. I I just skipped it because um, I, his films were a little bit weren't I, his his seventies stuff was good, and then Tenebrae was good, and then just as he went on, like um, I just kind of lost interest in his style. But anyway, yeah, check it out. Thank you. Have you seen the Blob from the eighties? Yeah, it's one of those eighties remakes." It's one of those, it's like it's like the blob, the fly, and the thing, like the '80s remakes that like just perfected what came before. The, I love the '50s versions of those movies. Like I saw the Blob when I was like a little, like a little little boy on VHS. My nan made me watch it for some reason, <laughs> and it scared me as a kid. Like the bit when the doctor's like begging for help at the window and like wraps around his head in the old '50s version, terrified. Yeah terrify me but i watched the 88 version a few years ago i love that movie that's another one of those that. like fun ones I, I love the other two you mentioned the thing the fly you know um well the thing is my desert island movie i could watch that movie on repeat like again and still enjoy it it's a perfect movie i oh God, yeah. my eyes almost rolled out of my head at in uh it chapter two when they did their little thing reference there in fact i had i paused it right before it was about to happen, turned to Max, said the line, and didn't even know that it was in the movie because two seconds later then the character says it and it's just like, oh my God. Oh yeah. I've not seen I've not seen the it movies recently, so I don't know. Keep it that way. I'm just telling you. You have a <laughs> whole thought... list of, of of like other movies that you need to watch. Keep it that way. Don't yeah, waste yeah, your yeah. time. Don't waste your time. I, I really wanted to give it a, a shot, but no. Um, I think you'd enjoy the first two Phantasm movies, American Werewolf in London. Scared me to death when I uh, first saw it when I was 11 years old. I was convinced werewolves uh, were real and everywhere. That's great. <laughs> um, I love Phenomena. See it and you'll know where Clock Tower came from. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Clock Tower games? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about Clock Tower. There's also a movie of uh, Clock Tower as well, I yeah, think. There is, actually, isn't there? I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Um, the it is, uh, is the reason I hate clowns when I saw him. And then Remember, there's the original. There is, I've seen the original it. Sorry, I've seen the original it. The the Tim Curry one. That one's that's good. That, that's pretty fun. But yeah, I definitely. I I think I watched uh, the original it as well when I was a little bit older. So I could. It was kind of just corny to me sometimes. <laughs> like you know, yeah, I I love Tim Curry. So like I just appreciate the performance. Tim I guess. Great. He's really great. Um, have you seen the Banana Splits movie in Willy's Wonderland? Oh, is that like the Five Nights at Freddy kind of style movies? No, I haven't. I, I'll be honest. Five Nights at Freddy's is like the jump scare stuff that I was complaining about <laughs> earlier. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I don't really have an interest in those movies, but I've heard good things about the Banana Splits movies, but Willy's Wonderland I've heard is a bit meh. Um, so I definitely want to see Banana Splits because apparently that's quite fun. But Willy's Wonderland, it like Banana Splits movie, from what I've heard, it sounds like um, Saw, but the puppets yeah. are in control of the traps, and it that sounds quite fun to me. Like, I could probably enjoy that. But Willy's Wonderland, it's just apparently, uh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? Nicholas Cage, Nicholas Cage, like punching like robots for like an hour and a half or something like that. It doesn't sound interesting to me. Have you seen uh oh damn what was that Nicolas Cage movie? It was the 
HP Lovecraft one that came out last year. Oh, Color Out of Space. Yeah. Did you see that one? No, but I want to. It looks pretty good. It's interesting. I, another movie I would like to get your opinion on. I don't necessarily know if I'd be if it'd be like the first one on my recommendation, but mm. if you want to be like, check this out. I mean, it's a movie made in the 2020s, basically, or whatever, with stop motion in it for crying really? out. Really? You know, what? there's there's some brief stop motion stuff in it. Very brief, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've, I've read. Happen. So sorry, yeah, no, I've read the book of it like yeah. i read the original of it. i've got like a whole like i've got basically like the bible of like um hp lovecraft i've read all of his original stories and stuff like in the mountains of madness and uh that one as well like color out space and it's really really good um i like the original story that's yeah i need to read the uh the books or the story rather um well we have we are now at two hours um i actually <laughs> we, i actually need to wrap this up because there's actually i still got stuff i i got to do but um yeah yeah yeah. i think uh that this is uh what we've learned tonight is that we do have um a section of the audience that enjoys talking about this stuff and personally i i really enjoy doing this too and it's always good having on james um but we will talk after the fact because i think that james and i should do this a little bit more often than just every once in a while yeah Um, i've really enjoyed it tonight yeah, so yeah, no, same. I, I don't, I don't know what time it is in your countries. This afternoon for me, <laughs> it's, it's nine p.m. for me right now. What time is it for you? Uh, one p.m. for me. Nice. <laughs> where uh, do you have any social media you want to plug? You know, tell anybody to where to find you. I'm playing. I'm playing it pretty quiet at the moment, but I've got a i I've got a new Twitter account, uh, but it's more personal. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, you, I follow Matt, so you'll see me and his followers. If you control through all of the followers there, but um, like I say, it's a personal account. I don't really, I don't really have any like anything to sell anyone at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, living my life. I'm a normal guy. I'm not in like I don't talk to directors. I don't get uh, famous Japanese directors business cards and buy them beers and stuff like that. Um, who and I don't be talking about through. James. Who, who can you <laughs> be talking about? Yeah, I'm just a I'm I'm just I'm just a guy that enjoys talking about this. You're just stuff, a cultured so. guy who's seen Halloween the original. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <describe> me. <laughs> well, guys, yeah, go follow James. Uh, it's awesome. Also, um, there's a couple of videos that James and I have done in the past. Uh, he did a Sadako review for us uh, mm-hmm. back in 2019, I think it was. Yes. Um, we did a, a J horror one last year. That was a bus, but it was fun. It was a bus. Yeah. It was a bus because we got like, we got a bunch of people schooling yeah. us. Like it, it was, it was pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah. And then tonight, thank you guys for sticking around. I mean uh, for, you know, two hours talking about, um, you know, uh, Koji Shiraishi's uh, filmography, which again, please go and check it out. I mean, yeah, if, if it's available on Shutter, go do that. If you can't find it there, James already told you where to find it. Um, it, it so worth your time. Uh, really good stuff. And then thank you for just the the just the chat about horror movies. It's not something we yeah. touch on very often. It's really fun. So definitely, gang, you're awesome. Uh, for uh, I was gonna say for for Godzilla's sake, but that doesn't really really. <laughs> seem to fit here for sadako's sake keep Sadako's watching sake. horror for the good of mankind and yourselves because if you don't you're gonna die in seven days anyway so <laughs> <laughs> have a good night guys and james thanks again for coming in man no worries